HPE announced their earnings and they announced the first Exascale uh, computer alongside with AMD technology. Wow. So, Daniel, why don't you uh, dive into this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll start on the earnings and uh, then you can finish me off and then we'll talk a little bit about the supercomputer. So, the earnings were okay. I mean, you know, this is one of these weird periods of time where we know there's some contraction, there's some economic headwinds, supply chain issues linger, interest, you got currency exchange issues, you got, you know, China shutdowns, you've got war. There's all kinds of factors. And so we have definitely seen some companies outperform handedly. We've seen some companies struggle. Um, and this has become a bit more mixed. Um, you know, on the recent All In Pod, Shamath talks about alpha and beta. And uh, it's interesting about how some companies have been able to grow endlessly during the pandemic because yeah, right. beta was high. And then alpha is really being able to function in any economic scenario. And that's less about HPE, but more about we're starting to see this decoupling of companies that are exploding and growing, even though it seems tougher, and companies that are finding more headwinds. Um, you know, I really like what HPE is doing with the GreenLake business. And so when I'm kind of assessing the earnings, I spend a lot of my effort there. You really have to look at HPE as a sort of a startup within a big, you know, kind of monolithic tech company. Because what Antonio Neri has been focused on since 2018, 19 has been GreenLake, has been subscription, has been as a service. And so when you start to make that pivot, you know, and we've seen it with companies that go from prem to cloud, like Microsoft, when that pivot gets made, there's always going to be this interim period of time where revenue growth is going to potentially slow because you go from large CapEx deals to smaller cash flow um, OpEx deals. And so I'm looking at, at HP and I'm looking at GreenLake and I'm saying, look, you know, I think you're going to see some resistance to growth. And part of it is because, you know, uh, they got to execute and perform better. Part of it, though, is because they actually on their GreenLake business are executing and performing quite well. 100% plus growth in their as a service business, again. Uh, so congratulations to them on that and Keith White and the team on, on that accomplishment. Um, but you know, in some areas like storage, where you know we did see Dell, for instance, have a really big quarter, uh, we saw HPE being down. And so you know, I think there's gotta be an answer to that. I think you know the market needs to say, hey, what's going on here? Is it falling off or is it because more deals are going to as a service? You know, what is the you know divergence of those sales? Or, you know, Pat, you mentioned HPC being off a little bit there. What happened there? And so that's one of the questions we're looking for from HPE. Now, on a more positive note, the company has continued to execute very well at the edge. That intelligent edge business that rolled out um, has continued to perform well, has seen, you know, close to double digit growth. And so, you know, as a whole, as I sort of weigh the outlook on the company, I think you've got to kind of balance those two things. Though. You've got to balance the sort of traditional legacy, large, our CapEx IT business, and then you've got to look at the green light business. If you're looking at that traditional business, I think it's it's going to be a harder road ahead, but I think the company already identified that. That's why they pivoted. That's why they're transforming the business and putting all their eggs into the green light area. And so if green light is growing strong, I think the long-term trajectory for the company looks pretty good, but that is the number to watch. If that number starts falling off, then we really have to start to worry about what the long-term looks like. Yeah, it's interesting. I I saw, by the way, I agree with everything you just said. I think this quarter was primarily about supply chain. Um, every single segment, if you look, uh, sorry, I'm sure you looked at the slides, but in the slides, supply chain was, was placed in every single uh, one of those. So I, I think... You know, there's some companies that seem to be managing their supply chain pretty tightly. Um, you know, some industrial companies didn't bring it up once in, the, in their earnings. Um, and how, how do you account for that? I mean, I'm sincere. Like, you know, that's really hard because if you're like an outsider, you, you know, you've been inside the walls of company. Like when you were at AMD and you listen to this and watch this and you understand this. But what I'm saying is you're an investor and you're saying, well, how does one company in the exact same space, Pat, say nothing? And grow and another company sitting there and there's been a couple now that have come out and sorry i had to jump but i, yeah. I want your take on this yeah and they say they say that it's all the problem and you're looking and you're going well how does one company do so much better than the other 
Yeah, so all, all things equal, the larger the supply chain, the more you buy, uh, the bigger um, deals, sorry, the, the lower prices you can get and the more power you have over the supply chain. I don't know all of these company companies' individual strategies. So for instance, you can lock, hell, you can lock in supply nine months from now if you're willing to pay for it and if you're willing to roll the dice. So part of this is is an educated gamble in in some uh, in some cases. Companies like Apple will invest billions of dollars into their suppliers to make sure that they can get supply of things like like chips. They they lock in that capacity in sometimes years in advance. So I'd have to you know do a paid research project to uh, to answer that. Uh, 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 completely. No, no, I know. I know. <laughs> but some of these companies are just smaller, right? When it looks at, I mean, an order of magnitude smaller in the amount of commodities that 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 that, that they buy. And, and I think in this case, I think it has a lot to do with it. So um, HP is buying a ton of stuff. Um, they just seem to have a a different uh, a, a different strategy on that. Uh, the only the only adders uh, on the earnings. I mean, th there were some, um, you know, another reason why I think this is a big supply chain is they have record backlogs. Okay, um, yeah. in storage, record backlog. Um, in compute, uh, ASP was up twenty percent. And what does that mean? Okay, I can't get supply, but so I'm going to shift mix to a higher uh, uh, ASP uh, c c configuration. Uh, orders were up 20%, right? Um, one thing, um, one net adder here is that Russia did impact them, $105 million, looks like a restructuring charge. Uh, no idea if that's going to be a continued charge or uh, a one-time charge. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, one thing I'm going to be looking at at the future is, you know, HPC had um, uh, actually lost money. Uh, and, you know, the the uh, description given in, in the slides were really about uh, backlog of awarded contracts. They, they, they misdate delayed acceptances. OK, and that's code for either I showed up late or I couldn't get this thing. Uh, I couldn't get the, the, this thing working. So they say they've got three billion dollars in backlog, Daniel, for this uh, HPC uh, group. So uh, we'll see. But hey. Let's move. Uh, let's talk about. I, I think, quite frankly, a whole lot more exciting than HPE earnings, and that is that uh, HPE delivered the first exascale supercomputer on the planet, called called um, Frontier. The core technology inside of this was obviously all the goodness of Cray and the benefit that they bring from a compute standpoint, CPU and GPU was delivered by good old AMD. <laughs> Who, by the way, uh, on the GPU side, really hasn't made an indelible mark in, in the enterprise, uh, anything near what let's say uh, in, NVIDIA uh, has done. Uh, one thing I, I, I loved were some of the claims that HPE made it said it's faster than the next seven most powerful supercomputers in the world uh, combined. I, I love I, I love stuff like that, Daniel. The other yeah. thing is the balance of power shifted from Japan. Um, I think it was called Fugaka, a supercomputer, to uh, Frontier here in the USA. So USA, USA, uh, we've got to feel pretty pretty good. Uh, uh, pretty good about that. So great stuff going on. Um, I think this is front and center Cray uh, acquisition that HPE made, which um, I think we're starting to see the uh, the fruits of the labor and we'll see uh, how high they could drive the profit uh, in the next uh, few quarters based on that $3 billion backlog. Yeah, absolutely, that, uh, that supercomputer is pretty special. Uh, you know, it's changing the world kind of stuff. <laughs> so, you know, like, yeah. can't, you can't really gloss over that. And sometimes it, it gets, it's, it's easy to, because you don't realize how important these kinds of breakthroughs 